Hey, what's up? I know a lot of people have already made Ableton Live 10.1 videos, but I want to show you eight things that I think are cool in 10.1. I'm going to share first the user wavetable. So I just have some audio that I found. Our ability to work faster and live. So I wanted to put together videos on how to use the powerful. You see it right here, montage1.aiff. And I set some parameters for the position. I added a second oscillator. And you can see more of the stuff right here. But I'll play it. So that's me talking right there, and I'm just using the LFO to move through a section of it. I may do another video. Uh, tell me in the comments if you want to know more about using the user wavetables. Next up is shortcuts. Now that I'm in arrangement view in this project, another great one uh, is some of the shortcuts. So we have H, which will collapse all the tracks so they're compact. You can find stuff easily. Then there's W that will zoom out and show you the whole song. And you can press W again to go back. And then uh, there is U for folding. So I can fold that group up or I can hit option and then it'll fold everything and then unfold everything. I don't think there is a f unfold folds. Uh, so the groups within groups, I don't think you can do that. But these give you a couple of nice uh, abilities to quickly get around and shrink stuff. I know in, I've been using live since seven and sometimes when you're working on huge projects like this, it gets kind of hairy and these uh, shortcuts will be able to help you. And I know they're helping me so far. I just gotta get used to pressing them. Also now, if you have a track that you want to solo, just make sure you've selected the track and hit S, and it'll solo that track. The next great one is trackpad support. So now I can pinch and zoom to right where I wanna be. And then I can just press W to go back out and back in, really nice. Another great addition that will probably be overlooked is channel EQ, it seems really simple at first, but I've noticed when I'm mixing or if I just wanna tweak a track really quickly um, and not get into the weeds with it, channel EQ is a great addition. So we see that this bass is a little bit uh, aggressive and we wanna tame it a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is, I've already set this, take that down, four, take the mids down, about 5.5, I think I had it. So yeah, that kind of tames it a little bit. And then you could tweak it to taste. You know, some people might think that's too much bass and take that out. So you can quickly just get the channel EQ in there and do a little thing and then duck out. Next up, automation handles and shapes. So this would sound insane, but let's say if I want to, or maybe it won't have this frequency modulate back and forth in a sine wave shape over the course of one bar. Now in 10.1, I can just select, right click, insert shape, sine wave. I could do the next one here. Whoop. Let's do that amount. Let's do triangle. And then let's do a envelope. So the handles come in if I select this whole area. It's kind of hard to see, but you could see little 
uh, handles right there. I could pull this down and minimize that shape. This comes in handy when you've kind of obviously already set something and you want to condense it or expand it. So you don't have to redo all of the automation. It's really nice. Another one is you're able to now edit the value of any automation point. So if we want this to be exactly 6,900, we can type that right in and we don't have to do that crazy fiddling around for like 20 minutes. This is one of the many changes that have come about to help with your workflow. So this is something that people have been asking for for a long time is VST3 support. And if we go to plugins, all you have to do is use VST plugin system folders. That's a lot. That's a mouthful. Turn that on and you're good to go. So you can see I turned mine on and I didn't realize that until recently that mine were never on like the last five, six months I've been using the beta. So you see now there's plugins. AUs, VST, VST3, and here's my whole list right here. I think one of the greatest, the greatest additions is being able to freeze without having to disable, actually to remove the side chains or do any sort of hacks. So you see I have a compressor on here and it is being affected by a kick drum that I've selected and we'll listen to it right now. So if I want to freeze this guy, I can come here, freeze track, no problem. Don't have to worry about any of your side chains or any other routing things that are going on. It will freeze no matter what, I'm pretty sure. Also, if I go over to the mixer, it's a lot easier to look in this view, you could see that the IO, actually the input is not uh, accessible, but you can change the output. You can change the volume and sends and any other thing you want to change. Um, yeah, you can even launch clips. I don't have any in here, but you can launch clips as well. And you don't have to worry about it being frozen and all the things that come with that. All right, so that is the eight things that I like in Ableton Live 10.1. Uh, let me know in the comments what your favorite is. If this is your first video of TVK, I have a bunch of other videos covering Ableton Live, some uh, iOS, Yamaha, Montage, uh, Mixed and Key, some other products. So check those out. Don't forget to subscribe, give a thumbs up, thumbs down if you don't like it, share it, um, hit the notification bell, all those things. Just do everything to the video. Send it to your friends, your mom, your dog. Send it in the outer space. I'm Josh Spoon, Pierce's Kitchen. Later.